Hey guys, and welcome back to another Realm Review. In this review, we'll be reviewing Round 4 of the AFL Toyota Premiership season. Let's get into it. Round 4 started off Thursday night. Sydney Swans versus Bulldogs at the SCG. And I tipped the Swans to win this one. They looked good against their game against North Melbourne Kangaroos the previous week. But wow. The Bulldogs came out firing in the first quarter, kicking three goals two to the Swans one point, and never really looked back from there. Third quarter, the Swans dominated a little, but could not find the middle of the goal sticks. Inaccurate kicking cost them in the third term, where they could have amounted a comeback if they kicked straight. Bulldogs smash them and win by 28 in the end. Probably game of the round. Friday night football. The Giants, the struggling Giants versus the undefeated Pies at the time. I tipped the Pies to win this one quite comfortably, but wow. Wow, I was wrong. First quarter, Collingwood looked alright. They came out firing early on. Giants. Giants managed to stick around throughout that first quarter, but in that second quarter, it really heated up. It was back and forth contest all the way. Tom Green, the rookie from Jeddah West, he looks good. He looks really good. Third quarter, Giants went in at the break by one point. In the fourth quarter, fourth quarter absolutely broke my heart, ladies and gentlemen. Jeremy Howe goes out with a ruptured PCL, probably out for the season as well. There's a few injuries with Phil Davis and... Was it Zach Williams as well? Injuries galore. There was a lot of injuries this week. And that's not very good at all. Collingwood had chances late in the game to take the lead back. But once again, their inaccurate kicking, same as the prelim, cost them in the end there. Giants get up by two points in what was probably the game of the round. There were a couple of close ones though. This was an easy game to pick. The informed Port Adelaide Power sitting at top of the ladder versus the struggling Eagles. They hate the hub, don't they? They absolutely hate the hub. Port Adelaide win by 48 in the end, and they just controlled the game. They controlled the whole game. Charlie Dixon went off. Can he maintain that and probably win the Coleman? You never know. He does look in good form, good shape this year. <sighs> yeah, Dixon dominated them down forward. More injury concerns. Jeremy Govan did not play. She'll be back next week. Will Schofield headbutting. Headbutting butters for some reason. Like, they're in all sorts right now. Gaff again, playing good but not having an impact on the game. Just easy, cheap touches out the back, not really impacting the score at all. Josh Kennedy finally got a bit of momentum. Finally, maybe, could start lifting his season. But Josh Kennedy and Jack Darling just aren't working at the moment in time. Hmm, it's going to be a very tough season for the Eagles. This game was the game that I said... I wouldn't be surprised if it went the other way, and wow. I didn't expect the Saints to come out firing like they did. They kicked the first four goals of the game. The Tigers bounced back with the next four. And at quarter time, I was like, wow, I think the Tigers are going to run over them in the second half here. But to my surprise, the Saints held on and played probably some of the best football that I saw all round. The Tigers don't look like themselves at all. I don't know what's going on with them. I'm really worried for their season right now. They could probably lose to Melbourne next week. They're in all sorts right now. Dustin Martin not having the impact that he had. Trent Cotchin down in numbers. Kane Lambert struggling. Their forwards are struggling. They're just all out of sorts right now. All out of sorts. And where are they on the ladder right now? They're 13th on the ladder. With one win, two losses, and a draw. Come on, Richmond. It's got to be better. Saints up to seventh on the ladder. That's always good to see. This game was one of the best games of the round as well. Bombers versus Carlton. Bombers played absolutely poor the first half. But they stuck around. Poor kicking from Carlton kept the Bombers in it. Last quarter football. Actually, we'll talk, we'll talk about Silvani and Merritt first. Do you reckon Merritt should get a week for the Silvani hit? I don't know. It's a tough one. Cracked ribs, bruised lung. Would bloody hurt. Last quarter. Oh, 
the most weirdest free kick, 50 meter penalty on Eddie Betts. Up to the middle, about 30 seconds left. Bangs it long, towns in marks at 45 out from goal. And he had a chance to win the game on the siren for them. It just falls short. Liam Jones, Mark Pittenek, clean that up, rush it over for behind, and that's all she wrote. Bombers go down to Carlton by one point in what was the classic final five minutes of the game. Eddie Betts, once again, showing that he isn't really washed up. He's playing well. David Cunningham. I don't know what the hell he had before the game, but he absolutely killed it. Had a chance to ice the game on his boot, though, and struggled. That's when the 50 bit, the 50 metre by Eddie Betts occurred shortly after. And there you go, the other Saturday night game. Brawl at half time between these two teams. It was close throughout the game. The Gold Coast Suns looked to keep their momentum alive with their third straight win, while the Dockers tried to get on the score, get on the win sheet for the first time this season. Nat 5 goes out with a small hamstring strain. Gold Coast win by 13 in the end. Matt Rao once again probably tolling another three votes. He's looking... He's looking outstanding. He's looking absolutely outstanding. Struggled a little bit here and there in the first half to get a few touches there and there. But in the end, he once again just dominates the league. Can they keep this up? They're versed... They've won against all of the bottom three teams. But are they bottom because Gold Coast is good? Or are they bottom because they're not as good as Gold Coast? We'll see how they go against the Cats this upcoming week. That will be a tough one. Matt Rao, can he match it along the lights with Dangerfield, Selwood and Gary Ablett in the middle? That's to be seen. No surprise with this game. The only surprising thing is that lo- the Brisbane Lions didn't win by 100 they kicked absolutely poor, 83-46. to 46. Brisbane beat the Crows at the Gabba. I hate the Adelaide media saying that Crows put up a fight. They didn't put up a fight. Third quarter, yeah, they dominated. But the Lions just couldn't hit the scoreboard. You can't be putting up a fight when you give up 33 scoring shots to 11. That's not a fight. That is getting absolutely dominated on the park. And Taylor Walker. Still looking like a dud. Kicked two goals. Had a little bit of an impact. But Lockie Neal, mate. I don't know what he was doing, but he needs to go out and, f- and do some goal-kicking practice right now. Zero goals, six. Hugh McCluggage, one goal, five. Didn't help their goal-kicking problems. One goal, 11 between those two. Lockie Neal, another three votes. He wants that brown, though. Got tagged by Ben Keys throughout the game. Chase Jones ran with him for a bit. Ned McHenry. But then, and no one can stop Lockie Neal. He's too good. He finds a way to break open the game. He's my pick for Brownlow right now. If not him, Matthew Rao should pick it up. Sunday football. It was a close one. Tomlinson, I think, had a shot at the end of the game to win the game for the Ds. They hung around most of the game, Melbourne. Geelong couldn't fight, couldn't break it open. They, they looked like they were going to at quarter time with Melbourne not scoring a goal. To their credit, they hung around, even took the lead going into the break. It was a very low-scoring, intense effort. Petrarca was up and about. Dangerfield was showing his signs, showing his class throughout the game. Pickett looked dangerous for Melbourne at times. It was a good game to watch. In the end, Melbourne came storming home. They had a chance to win the game with Tomlinson. I think it was Tomlinson to kick a goal and just didn't make the distance or missed to the left. I can't remember what happened. A lot of close games this season. Another one. Another Sunday night game. Hawks versus North Melbourne. Hawks. First quarter. North Melbourne and Hawks looked even matched. Second quarter, the Hawks has put the clams down in North Melbourne, dominating all over the ground. They got that good grid press playing well. Alex Clarkson knows what he's doing with this team. He knows how to get the best out of his players. And they're definitely showing that. They definitely look like a good team this season. Third quarter, once again, same thing. North Melbourne went into their shell. They looked boring in the third quarter, North Melbourne. Don't know what was going on there. 
Hawks once again pile on another two goals late in the term that extend the lead to 21 points. But wow. It went up to 31 points, the lead at one stage. And then the North Melbourne Kangas. Sherry gets a free kick. Go. Brown, free kick, go. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the, um, the Kangas are right back in this one. Then they went another goal, another goal, another goal. Down to the final dying seconds. Curtis Taylor had a shot to tie up the game. Misses. With about 20 seconds left, Jai Simpkin has a shot to win the game for the North Melbourne Kangas, and he just didn't get the curl on the ball. It was always going left, and that was all she wrote. The Kangas go down by four points to the Hawks at Marvel Stadium, the last game of the round. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed that video, please be sure to give it a like. Subscribe if you want more. I'll be doing my round five tips probably... Thursday before the first game, which is now St. Kilda and Carlton instead of Richmond and West Coast, or I'll be doing it Wednesday night, depending on how it goes. See you later, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day.